Clonard. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure Clan Iron wants to go out and, and win this final playing against a full white cross team as well. Like, you <laughs> know, let's not excuses. take anything for granted, Kevin. I, no, I, th I think really, um, I'm sure they'll take any sort of win, to be honest. Like, But you, you want to be going out to play, you know, it's the behind of the title. Indeed, indeed. Right, we'll take a look down the three, the, through the t two teams here. We'll look at the white cross team first. In goal, we have uh, Cahill McParland. The full back line today will be number two, Eamon Reavy, number three, Declan Lennon, and number four, Frankie Gorman. The half back line will be number five, Christopher Canning, number six, Anthony McCann, and number seven, Neil McSherry. In midfield for White Cross today will be number eight, Barry Shields, and number nine, Dermy Boyle. And the half forward line will be Barry McKeown, who also kept in the team. Uh, Mark Shields and Connor Malone. The full forward line sees number 13, Kieran McNulty, start today, alongside number 14, Cal McSherry, and number 15, Colm O'Hanlon. We'll go on to the Clan Iron team, and in goal today is Kieran McCurr. The full back line of Barry McKimbridge, Brendan McCarran, and David McKiernan. The half back line of number 5, Adam Kelly. Number Shea, Shea Heffron, and number seven, Chris McCafferty. Midfield, number eight, Mark Beatty, is joined by number nine, John McGee. In half forward line, number 10, James McDade, number 11, Barry Seeley, and number 12, Paul McKenna. And in the full forward line, number 13, Ryan Henderson, number 14, Connor Bell, who will captain the team, and number 15, Declan Latham. So as you said, Kevin, two very strong uh, teams there, both to their full complement. A couple of changes on the White Cross team from the last day, notably in the full forward line with Kieran McNulty. You'll remember Kieran McNulty, big tall um, forward who came on the last day and scored a couple of cracking points. Um, he seems to be replacing P. McGuinness and Colm O'Hanlon's in there as well. I'm just looking down through to see who he's replacing. Um, just can't see but Colin O'Hanlon, you, you'll remember him as well. Do you remember he scored uh, a goal in one of the earlier rounds and had to go off injured? That's right, yeah. Um, so, so White Cross will, will, will be up, up to up to, um, up to to full complement and obviously put a lot of thought into this final, as I'm sure of Clan Iron. And going on league form um, this year, Kevin, Clan Iron would be the raging hot favourites. No, what? Yeah, the boogie has them raising, raising hot favours. I think they're two to seven for this final. Um, some of the boogies and they, they, they were really um, they stood out. Um, the word of the four teams that contested in the semi-finals and they've you know they've just kicked on with the league form and gone into the championship here and um, where they had a bit of a hiccup in the beginning of the championship. They've, you know, they've they just motored through the rest and they're now sitting in the final and um, they're just a really dangerous forward line. Like you have young um, you have McDade and CD and McKenna there a real dangerous half forward line. But you know, when you look at the likes of Ryan Henderson, he's, he's done it for the county and uh, Connor Bell is exceptional talent as well as a captain of the side. And they're, they're real dangerous and you know, they can cause any team um, havoc and you know, I'm sure the the Clan Irons already you know, they've already reached the senior level now going in next year and um, White Cross need to win this game to be playing senior football next year, but there's no doubt Clan Iron will want to be going up as double champions. Yeah, that's indeed right, and what a motivation um, for the club already guaranteed promotion into Division One and senior football for next year, and what, what a season it would be for them to crown it with a with a double here today. And all standing in their all standing in their place is um, White Cross. Well, well, White Cross is, you know the. <laughs> They, uh, they pulled, you know, the couple of games that we watched, I think it was a Culleville game in the quarterfinals. That, they could, that was one game in particular they could really have lost. And they showed real uh, de no desire to get themselves over the line. Um, and it, they they, uh, they have every right to be in this final. But I think we're, we're going to have a, an Aston Latham now, Cora. Yeah, I think we may just be in the middle of a moment's silence. I'm, I'm not sure. Everything's gone quiet, isn't it?
to get into their positions um, I think we're on time we'll, uh, if the referee gets this ball thrown in in the next minute we'll be, um, we'll be on time He's got the ball at his feet uh, everyone seems to be in position all the way across forwards are in position one, uh, one, somebody just slow getting off the field referee looking around I'm just checking, beautiful day here in the athletic grounds with the sun um, sun shining down um, significant crowd, all the Gales from White Cross and from Clan Iron um, here to enjoy it and the ball's up and that's Clan Iron who come away with the ball and an early attack, ball fed into the forward line into Paul McKenna and Paul McKenna turns Declan Ravey and solos and runs into attack with Conor Malone and feeds it back here to Shea Heffron, Heffron he's going to try a shot off the right is he? No he feeds it back out, it's all very tight in that wing back John McGee John McGee with a lack of space, fed back again to Paul McKenna, McKenna all the way back to Heffron, they're retreating back, good, good defend by White Cross, it's Declan Leatham, who's breaking forward now, making great inroads, and a nice fisted ball in to John McGee, gets on his right, feeds it back, and a good incisive run here by James McDaid, looked like he's going to shoot in his left, swung back around his right, and tailed that just wide, to the left. So good early pressure from Clan Aaron Kevin and good, uh, and good tackling and good uh, good defence by White Cross. Yeah, it was indeed just kept uh, putting Clan Aaron under pressure and by that led to you know McDade uh, kicking up all wide. And, but uh, a good bit of patience as well shown by Clan Aaron there in the early stages. Yep, big left footed kick out by the White Cross goalkeeper here and breaks beautifully there to number five Christopher Canning and a couple of deflections there and. White Cross are appealing for the sideline ball, but it's been given to Clan Iron with uh, sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, maybe we're seeing things wrong from up here, Kevin, but uh, it certainly looked like a white, ball, white Cross ball there. Yeah, it's, we're in a lucky position here. We're just overseeing, <laughs> just right down the front of us here underneath the stand. And, um, as I say, it was that well, you would think uh, the linesman would be in even better position, <laughs> wouldn't he? <laughs> right in front of him. <laughs> so look at uh, it, it was it was a marginal sort of a, a challenge anyway, so so I'll just take it that it's a Clan Iron ball. Shea Heffron struggling with a bit of a foot injury or ankle injury. Clan Iron be keen to see him all right. He's a he's a quality player for Clan Iron and he's just trying to run it off there at the minute. And Mark Beatty's gonna take this sideline ball and dinks it down the line to Connor Bell, who's come the whole way out. He's fed back to Chris McCafferty. McCafferty coming back inside to Ryan Henderson. Clans will be hoping that Ryan Henderson get the ball 
back in the field a bit. He's a wee bit too far out for there. Like it. Ryan Henderson gets back on it just on the 65. Feeds it out wide. And an overlapping David McKiernan. Feeds it on to Ryan Henderson. Ryan Henderson now inside the 45. And all the way back to McKiernan again. It's all very patient build up by Clan by Clanaran. Back to Mark Beatty, who's been around a long time for these Clanaran men. Nice ball in the full forward line. It's all fed back to Connor Bell on the 45, spreads it the whole way across. Looks like Ryan Henderson. And it's dinked in over the top, but it's intercepted. And too over elaborate there, Kevin. We'll come back to that in a minute. Here comes a big break from White Goss. And it, it turns out to be a good ball. It looked like a terrible ball. I thought it was going to be intercepted. Barry McKeown gets out and wins it. Mark Shane's on the ball. He's going to run, and he gets shouldered in the back. Yep, Rory. I thought Rory was going to signal for. Um, advantage there for play on but it was yeah he was sandwiched there and you can feel yeah. Kevin the, the the whole crowd lifting whenever Mark Shields gets on the ball yeah he's he's different gravy I guess need compared to some of the other players we've seen so it's say uh, he's currently man and he's he just loves to run at times yeah. scares the life out of him we've seen it over the sort of especially in the quarters and semi-finals we've seen him doing it time and time again yeah and that's what the spectators like to see and all GA fans, you know, when 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 the when the space is in front of you for someone to run into it and then make intelligent use of the ball, and Mark Shane does it time and time again for uh, for White Cross and for the county. He's taking this off the ground, and it's it was either going wide or it was going in the top corner. Shea Heffern caught it, and he's done well here and strong in possession to take that out of defence. Fed it across to Chris McCafferty, and Clan Aaron look to go again. This will be their third attack. If you have to register couple of big hits around the middle. Connor running into tackles here. And Mark Beatty on pos in possession. And he's he's dispossessed well by Anthony McCann. A big big ball into Barry Oak McKeown and too high. And, the <laughs> and an awkward bounce there. Kevin and the keeper scrambling away for, for a 45. But a real chance there if that ball had been a, a bit of foot lower for Barry McKeown. Yeah, it's and um, the try to pump that ball and try and get a one-on-one -on -one there. And um, you know, it's just bounced through and it's one of him. Once it can fly in, it almost bounce over the bar. The keeper's done well, just to sort of palm it away. It could have went anywhere. Yeah, and already in the first uh, five minutes, we can sort of see the pattern of play. Clan Iron, th they're happy to keep possession. They're happy to take the ball into attack. But that'll, that'll suit White Cross right down to the ground. They've got a uh, big physical man around the middle. And you just saw it there, Mark Beatty being dispossessed and White Cross setting up an attack. So Mark Shane's having a second go at this. This one's chipped in. The goalkeeper comes out and catches it and feeds it out to Chris McCaffrey. So neither side able to make a breakthrough yet, five and a half minutes into it. David McKinnon coming away along the far side, and Clan Iron getting up to support him. The uh, furthest man for is Adam Kelly, his, his wing half back. And it comes back all the way back to John McGee in midfield. Ponderous again round the midfield area in between the two 65s. It's Chris McCafferty feeds Heffern, and it's a another turnover, another turnover. Kevin, far too ponderous from um, Clan Iron there. Yeah, it's not something we're used to seeing with Clan Iron. Usually punching holes into the defence, but he running fast, quick off the shoulder ball. And it's just not happening at the minute. Well, to credit the way cross. Yeah, and Kevin, Rory Robinson, he, he's very open Kevin, very unlucky there. He tried to gather that first time. It didn't gather, and he sort of scuffed at it again. But Rory's given him for a picked ball. I think it was just bad handling. Not sure, but it's the same thing. Beatty runs into tackle again. This time he gets through. He's about to get another hit. Um, just offloaded at the right time. Connor Bell coming inside the 45 gives it a great interplay between himself and Ryan Henderson. And again, Bell, he's going to look for Henderson again. Gets it. Do they want to shoot? There's another pass. <laughs> Comes back. And there's a him on a lot of space here. It's Chris McCafferty. And he's in. Get on top of the goalkeeper. And it's a goal. Deflected goal. Um, it was uh, I was just about to be very critical, Kevin. It, it looked like Connor Bell or. Um, Ryan Henderson cut out a point there at will and they persisted and persisted and persisted and Chris McCaffrey got in behind um, for a goal yeah but that's uh, you know oh uh, yeah they, they pondered up, up around that 21 was somebody should have kicked it over the bar to begin with but they, that was that good Pearson run that was talked about there that the Clan Arm were, were, had shown over and over especially in the semi-final and it's a real dangerous and difficult one to, to defend against and that's what happened it created the space but they uh, they need to kick the nerves out of the game and, and uh, not be afraid to go for the post. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's all very touchy right in the middle of the field. Good ball into Collie O'Hanlon. O'Hanlon gets out in a good burst of pace. He tries to get in his left and he's pulled down and he bought, he bought that well. Kevin, he, 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 he got out well in, in front and, and showed as if he was going to go down the line and cut back on his left 
and his man was mapping his hand across. Uh, Collie made full use of it and, and went down for the free there. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah, a lot of the forwards are cute enough to that, you know, when the hand comes in like that, just get a hold of it and the drop. Yeah, well, it's it's two things. It's cute in the forward and it's sort of slack by the defender. If you leave a hand in, you can expect someone to hold it. That's terrible from Collie O'Hanlon. That, that ball didn't cross the 21, but it broke him down and comes to Callum McSherry and Callum McSherry. Pops that over the crossbar. The, the umpires weren't sure there. I think the, the, the one on this side just just gave it there at the last. So, White Cross are off the mark with um, Colly O'Hanlon. And he um, sort of spurned, his blushes were spurred there with, with a wild kick up, up in the air, but White Cross are off the mark. Yeah, they've done well to get in, in around, get that break on ball as it come down. And you know, it's, it's a perfect response to the you know, Clan Iron's um, goal. Yeah, here's Heffron on ball. He's immediately tackled by Neil McSherry and brother Cahill was just coming across here's um, Mark Beatty a terrible ball 50-50 um, ball up in the air which really favoured the man running forward who was the white cross man Collier Hanlon just found himself in a wee bit of space there and oh, too much too high there was a great there was a great bit of play by Collier Hanlon he let on he was running in the back and when his man turned he made a dart forward which just would have suited a nice rolling ball or a nice hopping ball in them. That was fired up over his head and he had no chance there. Um, but still, it's it's all it not this game hasn't settled down at all. Um, the two mid, the two sets of midfielders, Gavin, I'm, I'm watching them both, and they're both touch tight and not none, none of them likes being touch tight. Um, the White Cross men are, are very very tight to the two midfielders, and the the Clan Iron men don't like it. They're they're slapping out and they're throwing. Kier McNally with a great ball into Barry McKeown. Barry McKeown couldn't gather it first time, couldn't gather it second time, but it comes out here. And a great run by Mark Shields. He's inside the 21. He slips. He tries to lay it back. He's well tackled. And then he he tackles. Barry McKeown's in on the 21. He feeds it back to Connor Malone. The spur man over here. Two spur men. Cal McSherry sh shoots high. That's a cracker. Yeah, it's a good score. Very well worked. I uh, thought they were going to lose out the opportunity there. Tom Aaron was, but it was uh, bringing them down well. and they done well just to turn that over and, and kick a great score. Yeah, it's um, the, what do you call him, Mark Shields. When he lost his footing, there was a real opportunity for Clan Aaron to turn the ball over, but they couldn't get it turned over. And, um, Clan Aaron really struggling to get a wee bit of space around midfield here, and that's it's, it's all playing into White Cross's hands. It's the tightness of, of the mark, and Collie O'Hanlon does well to get out in front there, feeds it on to Eamon Reavy, not renowned for his shooting. Oh. Just it went wrong there, Bora. <laughs> no, well, Eamon Reavy uh, uh, has been a, a stalwart at cornerback for White Cross down through the years, and you know I wouldn't be unkind by saying he's not cornerback for a reason. You know, if he if he was a sharp shooter, he, he might have pushed up the odd time. But from I ever remember him playing on the twelve or on the fourteen, he's always been a cornerback. <laughs> so I think he found himself there more out of following his man than a desire to get up and shoot. But a uh, big ball out, and Anthony McCann jumps and tries to get a break, but it's a great fetch by Paul McCann from Clan Iron. And it's given, it's given Clan Iron possession. But uh, the point I was making there earlier was the two midfielders from Clan Iron, Beatty and McGee, they're, they're, they really don't like the two White Cross men in their faces, and they're, they're already slapping and, and, and arguing. And, um, but here's, White, here's, here's Clan Iron. Clan Iron man done well to hold possession there. That was James McDade. And a wee bit of indiscipline there in the tackle just by White Cross. They had no need to, they had no need to foul there, Kevin. They, they had him slowed up, they had him stopped, they had him yeah, facing away from goal. The two men out on him there, he wasn't going anywhere. And, um, although he's, he's quite good when he gets the ball into his hands to try and get away from the markers. Like, there's two on him, he wasn't going to cause any danger. And now you know, Clan Iron has an opportunity to get a score here. Yep, this is Barry Seeley, which will be his first attempt um, from a dead ball. He steps up and he hits this right footed. Oh, and it's just straight off the laces and it's just dead, dead eyes straight over the bar. And a great um, effort and a great score by Barry Seeley. So, with 11, with almost 12 minutes on the clock, it's a goal and a point for Clan Iron. Coolug is cooling to Clan Iron and two points. Yeah, cooling down Crush One. Good kick out there by White Cross as well. Nice low and well fed back. Well done there by Neil McSherry. Kevin, you remember the last day we, we were very critical of, white, of this approach of white crosses as well, where the short kick out brings them into all sorts of problems here. Yeah, especially with Clan Iron, where they're going to close it down at every opportunity. And, and you, lose a, you lose a ball in that area, you're in big trouble. Yeah. 
Yeah, Kevin, I've made the point a couple of times. The linesman's only after speaking at number nine from Clan Iron there. Uh, John McGee for getting involved. White Cross players are uh, like they're running in front of him and they're running alongside him and they're like, tipped tight. But um, he's, he's reacting every time. There's another point for Barry Seeley, a goal in two to two points. So just watch this space. Uh, he doesn't like he doesn't like being closely marked and um, just as I say, the linesman will have taken note of that. Um, these short kickouts, Kevin, they, they, they bring then they bring a heart attack on. Like they're, they're yeah, they do indeed. You know, I'm playing, you know, ball in around that area. It's, um, it's going to cause real danger. And especially when they they are having a lot more joy in, in the middle of the field actually than what Clan Ern are having. Yeah, Cal McSherry struggles to get get it up and it flicks it on in. There's a good ball into brother Neil and Neil. Oh, he's four men on him. He's oh, and he gets a free in there. <laughs> free, Kevin. Clan mm -hmm. Ern done everything they could not to fill him there. They got they got numbers around him. And they were trying to get the hand in, and it looked like he had just found himself in a cul-de-sac. Um, but it was, it was slack enough by Neil, too. He should have released that ball quicker. Yeah, it, there's, no, there's no time for no. dallying. Yeah, as soon as you, you, you delay for a second, and you, just that was a prime example there. You're just hounded down, you know, with three, four men around you. And it's, he's fortunate enough here to get this right. Yeah, it's Barry McKeown. He's going to hit this right-footed. It should suit Barry, and he's normally accurate. And oh, that's a well-struck point. That's a... Barry off the mark for this county final. Uh, it's a goal and two points for Clan Iron and three points for White Cross. So let's see how the, the, the midfield pairs out again. It's all touched tight again out round the middle. Um, it's a short to number seven, Chris McCafferty. He is Neil McSherry right behind him, but he does well to get away from him, the bearded McCaffrey. And it all comes down this near side. It's all a bit tight, and even uh, Canning gets a hand in on the poor. Straight to Mark Shades. Mark Shades opened the legs out and he's been pulled. And if he goes down here, uh, yeah, I was going to say, Kevin, if he goes, he's running that fast that you fancy if he's touched at all. Yeah. He can't stay up. Nobody's balance could be that good. So, and the referee's going to take a name here. Um, there's, you know, it's very, very hard for a defender who's trying to run alongside him or trying to intercept him. You know, if he solos it and, and then runs into it, it looks like it's going to be a body check. Yeah, he just he, he twists and turns and he goes that fast. He, you put a finger on him at all, he's down. Like, and it's not it's not diving in any shape no, or form whatsoever. It's just that he's running that fast. Yeah. yeah. Barry yeah. McKeown, um, he, he's a relatively easy task. He's just outside the 21-yard line, dead centre in front of goal. He strikes this right-footed. And it's over the bar again. So... Two in a row for Barry, for Barry Oak. And it's, uh, it just narrows the gap. There's a single point in it here. So, a good game, Kevin. Yeah, it's decent enough game so far. And it's, you know, it was the opening few minutes for you know, the two teams need to shake their nerves out and, and get on with it. And that's where the period of play we're at now. And, you know, Clan Earth need to be careful. You know, given any sort of freeze there, he, you know, McCune's just showing us uh, what he's capable of doing. Yeah, free there for a foul on Beatty. He punches it down the lane and gets it back. Uh, hammers this down into the left corner. A ball for James McDade, and James McDade is just um, dispossessed, and the ball out for a second by White Cross, which has moved quickly. Um, it's taken the ball into, into traffic again there. The, the White Cross tend to do from, from sideline balls and goal kicks. There's a good catch by Kieran McNulty, and he gets round Heffern, and he's, he's held. Um, Referee, not taking any more action there. Man inside is Mark Shields. Ah, oh, and hop there's the we needed a wee bit of a damp sod there. Poor kick out from the goalkeeper. Um, it, it got to his man, but he was under immediate pressure. Uh, nice tactic, a white cross there to, to get Mark Shields in behind and, and, and leave, him, leave him in the goal chance. Here come Clan Iron again through midfielder John McGee, and he's dispossessed. Uh, there's a late shoulder. Clan Iron Man's laying on the ground holding someone out. Referee's telling everyone, get away, get away. He's just checking his watch. He may, I don't know who's going to book or you get the book out. He may book the man who's laying on the ground. It is a free to Clan Iron. I um, don't know why he's standing with the book in his hand. The guy who's, the guy who's hurt, the guy who's on the ground was was holding on to a white cross man's boot, is that what he's going to do? Don't know. He's just held up for a slight second, he's up now. What are we going to do here? Nothing. <laughs> After all that. He, Kevin, he went to the effort of taking out his black book and taking out his pencil and 
looking around him and looking like he's going to write something and then he's not going to write anything at all. Maybe he's left the sharpener in the changing room. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Beatty's going to take this left foot and he's looking around for options. He's a short on, that's his midfield partner. And he goes back behind the 65 and lets one in, but oh, I thought Conor Malone was going to intercept that. Breaks to Barry Sealy and Barry Sealy hits a high ball in. Free. <coughs> There's a free here. Free out, white cross. Free in to Clan Iron. Wasn't sure about that. I was following the play. It must have been something off the ball. Um, Ryan Henderson delivers this long in. It goes over the mall. Clan Iron retained possession. Andy McCann got a very important hand in there. <coughs> James McDade feeds it back to Barry Sealy. Barry Sealy all the way back to Chris McCafferty. He's coming across the line. Finds Beatty. Beatty tries to dink one over the top to Connor Bell, but it's well broken down by Anthony McCann, who started the game really well in the heart of that defence. And Eamon Reavy breaks out of defence, and he's pulled back. And the referee wags advantage and play on. Anthony McCann, who made that interception, is now crossed up the 65 and crossed the 45. And he looks for Barry Shields. Shields turns, gets back to McCann. McCann hammers this high. Kieran McNulty's under it. Cameron Nutty's good in the air, but that ball was just behind him slightly. And here comes Turner in. Oh, ball intercepted by Connor Malone. It's on the ground. Pick it up, Barry Shields. If he can find, he plays one across to Collie O'Hanlon, and that ball is blocked and out for a 45. Um, goal chance there for, for White Cross with the poor, poor defence and poor distribution out from, from goalkeeper to defence. Um, White Cross really let uh, Clan Aaron off the hook there. It's going to be the result is it's going to be a 45 to uh, White Cross with the score still 5-4. Uh, cool, I guess yeah, Kuling to Clan Aaron, I guess Kerry Kuling to Neve Killian and Crush One. It's going to be Mark Shields to take this. He very deliberately sets the ball on the 45 and takes one, two, three, four, five, six steps back. A couple of baby steps. He runs straight at the ball and kicks through the ball. Oh, that's a great point. Great score there for Mark Shields. Um, is the leveller. That's the with with 20 minutes gone here. It's all level again with um, White Cross five points and Clannaren uh, one two. So goalkeeper Kieran McCure reassesses things here and. He's pointing out to the left-hand side. He wants a bit more movement from his midfielders. And he hammers it out. Centrally enough, a wee bit to the far side. And it's uh, they all jump. All midfielders jump. And they all get up well. And it's White Cross who won the breaking ball, as has been the case for the majority of this first half. Either Clan Iron win it clean or White Cross win the break. Good ball into Collie O'Hanlon. And if Collie used... Oh, Kevin, he could have used his body there to, uh, to shield the man away from the ball and let it run past him. But he tried to catch it and it was intercepted. There's a brutal ball, terrible ball which is broken down to Mark Shanes, Mark Shanes tried to play it through and it was, wasn't a great ball either um, and it's all a wee bit frantic here um, as you know, Chris McCafferty takes it away for Clan Iron. Chris McCafferty started this game well at left half back and a foul, foul given there um, by, for a foul by Dermy Boyle on John McGee so Kevin, 100 mile an hour stuff It is indeed, yeah, there's, there's a few mistakes that's happening, it has crept into the defence of the Clan Iron team and it's done something we accustomed them with, and, you know they, done, they were very solid in what they'd done in, in their lead up to this final and it's strange to see them making so many mistakes but um, you know, White Cross has uh, they've had a couple of sort of sniffs of goal opportunities based on those mistakes but they haven't taken them. Yeah, Mark Beatty's going to hit this free left footed a oh, throw ball there, surely a throw ball the, 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 the everybody in the crowd and everybody in the commentary box here um, shouted for a throw ball like Kevin yeah, he seemed to scoop it up as soon as he got it it's hard to see how he could have got a hand hit well everybody but the referee seen it and he's the most important one to see it yeah exactly um, here's Eamon Reavy well intercepted there and Anthony McCann strong in possession he comes out and finds Neil McSherry Neil McSherry fires this across and they all leave it and it's going to come nicely to Shea Heffernan not um not the best bit of forward play by White Cross forwards who look a wee bit tired. Dermy Boyle with a, with a lazy tackle across the chest of one of the Clannaren men coming running through there. Could have been dangerous for White Cross. 
but um, there's an overlap on the far side with Adam Kelly, who feeds it into Ryan Henderson and gives it back to Kelly. A penalty! It's a penalty. I care, Kevin, in many ways, a soft penalty, but um, the White Cross man tried, tried an impossible tackle. He was, he was running at full steam and tried to get a hand in and whip the ball away, and he just clattered into the back of the man. Yeah, but again, it's all down to Connor and you know, fast moving play with boys off the shoulder and support play. And that's you know, every time we've seen Connor do that, that they've caused cross, or White Cross so much danger, and it, you know, it's now resulted in a penalty. Yeah, and it's uh, Barry Seeley who face up against Cahill McParland here. Uh, Cal McParland trying the nine games and um, slow in retreating back to his sideline. Oh, and he all he went the right way. Kevin got his foot down, but uh, too much, too much power in the ball and a goal for Barry Seeley. Yeah, it was. Um, it wasn't the greatest penalty we'll ever see. It, but you know, the keeper probably should have had a bit better till it. Um, but it's in. It's um, you know, and it's the goals. It's uh, keeping Connor in front at the minute. Yeah, this ball's hammered out the middle. Beats the ball. That's not the first time that ball. That ball that kick out went out over the 45 in the far end of the pitch. A good hook by the by goalkeeper McParlin. Um, Beatty on the ball here and fl flicks it on to McGee, his mate. And McGee is down on the ground and gives it back here. And Clanner and build again from defence. It's Declan Latham. And that's a good ball in to McDade. McDade cuts out here. And the referee while wagon play on. I think the referee Kevin was just getting fed up every time there was a tackle the clan and man went down there in that passage of play. Yeah, it could have been, yeah. But I think it, it, he, he definitely went down too softly there, you know, as soon as the hand came in he was down like a second potato. So um, I think that's probably where the referee played on and he'd let that one go. Great take by Cahill McCherry there, feeds it back to Collie O'Hanlon. Yeah. Collie O'Hanlon cuts that wide. Kevin, just in that whole passage of play there, I don't know if you've seen um Mark Sheen's done great work of keeping this ball in along the sideline. And Mark Beatty, um, our old mate, uh, playing midfield here for Clan Iron, um, done his best to come over and old style tried to smash him out over the end line. But Mark Sheen's obviously maybe playing county football and that. He's tightened himself up and that there and just ducked the shoulder. So Beatty come running square on him and absolutely minced, him, minced his hip. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, In the 1980s, uh, he would have won that yeah. challenge. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, the muscles is probably not as what they used to be for really. Like, but that's uh, it, that's uh, it. Give the credit to him, he's still playing and we're not. Ah, well, that's it, that's it. He's still tramping about the midfield there. Here's a big kick out by McCure. It's hanging around the middle and oh, they all went for it. And, and the, the, that's happened quite a lot in the first half where they've all gone and it, the ball has evaded them all. If I was playing on the half forward line there, Kevin, I'd be banking on that. I'd be gambling the odd time that the ball was going to come the whole way through. Dermy Boyle powers his way through the midfield and he tries a long to head on the ball. She, oh, Heffern done well to get that. I thought Mark Shane was going to knock it out of his hand. Here comes Beatty again. The hip seems to be all right. Gets it down the line and another ball down the line to... McDade, and McDade's a lively character. He's being chased by Declan Lennon, but McDade's not going to catch him. McDade's very fast and feeds us all the way back to Barry Seeley. Seeley comes under pressure and left it back to McGee. And he sliced across that ball and he really wanted to be pulling it in the other way, Kevin. Yeah, it's like the other one the outside of the foot and just went badly away, but. Um, it's just where Clanner and the Texas seem to, when they start to slow up around there, they seem to be uh, lost in eight years and they're kicking balls back and forward and then eventually someone will just suddenly have a pop at it. But when they're going you know, off the shoulder stuff, you know, straight through the, the white cross um, defence, they, they're getting a lot more joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Free given there for a foul on McGee, the, the midfielder. Though he's knocked out over the sideline by Cal McSherry and if he gives a free and a punch down the line. Here go, oh, Clanner get a great break here. Oh, Paul McKenna, and our viewers of, of course at home would have seen that. Paul McKenna just came and completely wrong footed his marker and got a, got a run straight in on goal. And a real goal chance for, for Clanner and again there, but he, he was happy to fist that ball over the bar. Um, Midfielder shape up again as the kick out comes out. And it pulls out to this side, and a great kick out, and a great take by Conor Malone again. Clanner and go for the big haymaker shoulder, and again the miss. Conor Malone pushes that down the corner to Barry Oak McKeown. Clanner and ball, yeah, yeah, Kevin. I think I think they're all accurate. They're all right there. 
think it was uh, Barry McKeown that played that ball out. He's not too happy about it, but it's just the way it is. Um, not too many options here for the taker. It's uh, Declan Latham. Beatty punches it down to McGee, gets it back. Gets a hit for his troubles, and he has a wee snigger at that. Um, Con uh, Connor Bell. Oh, he, and he runs into space. He's expecting the, the, the one too, but he didn't get it. Latham with a lovely turn. And he's running straight in on goal. He should shoot, but he doesn't shoot. He feeds it off till his mate who ran into traffic. And Kevin, why did Connor Latham not tuck up all over the bar? I, I think he thought the goal opportunity was on. He's let it off. The, I think it was Henderson there that um, he's been snuffed out. His um, you know, point was on. He should really have took it. Yeah, Kevin, that was a great play there by Kieran McNulty. He, he used his strength and his, his body weight to get in there and played a lovely ball into Collie O'Hanlon. Collie O'Hanlon, oh, he got inside and he got past the last man and he looked for all the world he was going to strike that with his left foot and he slipped and fell and he looks to the sky but um, here come Clanner again with McGee and he's man free on the far side and that's played across to him and the, the overlapping man is Barry McCambridge, the number two, who's still going on the inside and he's free. If he gets, if he gets it now, there he is, look, on the 21. Um, he tries. <laughs> That's why he's coming back. <laughs> he tried. A, he tried a nice wee hand pass into the forward, and it was misplaced. Mark Shields gets a run on him, and he's away looking at for speed. And Beatty, I thought Beatty was going to do him there. And Shields, yeah, big high effort, and it's wide to the near post. Um, unlucky there by Mark Shields, but Kevin, it's always good leadership by Mark. He always stands up and accepts responsibility and takes control of a game for White Cross and just whenever White Cross seems to be under pressure that he always seems to come up with the goods for him so the White Cross won't mind him having a go there and, and kicking it and kicking it wide he's um, he gives the other team something to think about at all times doesn't he? Yeah he does indeed yeah but he, he'd be right to sort of go from there he's you know, the wind's advantage is with him and um, he's going to have the distance but he's just pulled it there left and wide but it's when he gets in the ball like that and he, he, he puts the foot down like he said, it's, it's a scary scene. It's, it's difficult to defend against. Yeah. So, let say, there will be one minute of added time. I'm just hearing here. So, there's three seconds of normal time. So, one minute after that, there's enough time for anybody to get another score. There's it's two, three to five points at the minute. Um, nine, five, a four point lead from Clan Aaron. And those goals, Kevin, just critical for Clanner and, and, and could really be the, the you know the talking point at the end of this game yeah it could well be and they've, they've took their opportunities well and there's been a couple of goal opportunities fell White Cross's way and they, they unfortunately didn't get snipping them out but um, you know do we you know Clanner's in front but I would say White Cross probably played you know had more possession and more more opportunities up front and um, it's just Con Aaron that just you know, a few occasions where they just ripped open the White Cross defence and got the goals. Yep. Free here on the halfway line. Beatty plays it back to McKiernan. <coughs> back to Beatty. Punches it down to Connor Bell. And they're happy to hold possession around the midfield here. Play it all the way back here to the 45. And very ambitious ball with the outside of the right boot to set them on the attack. But should be a. Yeah, it is a White Cross ball. Well, well recovered, Neil McSherry. Referee blows up, and they take it quick. Anthony McCann to, to Barry Ogren. It's all very quick. Um, Connor Malone with a lovely ball into Collie O'Hanlon. He's got an overlap there, but he's aiming Reavy. Dermy Boyle again, not a shooter. Collie O'Hanlon, burst, a burst of pace, gets him inside, and he strikes that over the bar. And a great point there for, um, for Collie O'Hanlon. <laughs> It looked for a second like he, he might have went on with it and had a, had a rattle goal. Yeah, I think the opportunity was on there. He should have great burst of speed to get past his man and he had a, he had a sniff of blood there, but he's decided to kick it over the bars. Far yeah. enough, this stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And speed's everything for an inside forward and he showed it in abundance there. I'm sure it'll give his man something to think about in the second half. The manager will be, be telling him just to tighten up a wee bit. I think Rory Robinson's ready to blow here as this keeper blows it out, he's telling him to come on ahead balls up and Rory blows and half time, good half a football Kevin, they score a 2-3 to Clan Iron and 6 points to White Cross and um, what can we expect in the second half? Well, probably more of the same like it's it's been a fairly even game it's Clan Iron's just getting that edge in front because of the goals and 
um, white crosses need to you know utilize the likes of Shields there and get him on the ball and get him running at the defence. But you know, I've been a bit disappointed in a way with Clan Aaron. I was expecting a, a better performance out of them. Yeah, they're leading and they'll, and they'll be the happy of the two teams. But you know, they're they're, they're punching forward play. You know, they used to you know, in the last few games they were driving at teams and they were offloading it and they were you know slicing them open. And we've only seen that on a couple of occasions so far. Yeah, that's that's very accurate. And but this is a very physical um, white cross team, of course. And Clan Aaron have no doubt done their homework and they're trying to be very very deliberate in what they're doing. Sometimes. To their detriment, um, sometimes they can be very slow and ponderous in, in, in the attack, as we've seen in the first half. And they do certainly look more dangerous whenever they get that good quality ball into James McDade in particular, um, where he can feed off um, Ryan Henderson, who we haven't seen an awful lot of in that first half. Um, but they do have the sharp Declan Latham as well, has looked very, very dangerous whenever he gets in possession. So I'd, I'd, I'd say if the game just stayed the way it was going, um, it, it, it probably would do Clan Iron, but um, if I was Clan Iron's manager, I'd be telling them to make things happen a wee bit quicker and, and to take their points. You know, they've, yeah. been, they've, been, they've only scored, they've only scored five times. Two of them are goals, right enough, but they've only they've only scored five times and they've had maybe a dozen chances to score. So um, manager will be looking at that as a particularly poor return. Um, but Kevin, we'll leave it for half time and we'll, we'll uh, let you get a cup of tea and join us again and. 10 minutes for the second half. All right. Ron McCarty, Clan Aaron, Chairman of the Club. Brian Kelly, Tully Swan Kelton. Jared Cunningham, I'm uh, Chairman of Robert Emmett uh, Football Club. Barry McKeown, Captain, St Killian's White Cross. Preparations have gone well for Sunday. Uh, We've uh, worked very, very hard for the last 10 months. Yeah, training, training hard. Uh, good spirit within the group. Uh, yeah, we feel we're in a good position coming into Sunday. Yeah, preparations went well. Um, obviously, since the semi-final, we've had two weeks really of training. Well, as always, you always have a couple of niggly injuries and hoping that they'll clear up. But hopefully now, they'll clear up before the, the big day. But we should, we should be OK on that front. Nothing beyond a, a few niggles. Uh, but you expect that. Uh-huh. And... We hope to have a full squad to pick from for Sunday. Focusing on being prepared, uh, getting our warm-ups right, getting our preparation right, and we won't be changing it for Sunday because it's worked all year and we think uh, we hope that that'll be the case. We have a way of playing, we think that that serves as well, so we're just going to try and bring that out on Sunday. I think if we stick to things we're good at, we'll, uh-huh. we'll be OK. Clan Iron, I think, have set the standard for, for intermediate football to our Dharma this mm-hmm. year, uh, so we, we do know what we're coming up against, but and saying that if we get our, our own game in order, mm-hmm. uh, we feel we're in with a good chance of, of, of taking home the, the cup. White Cross are an excellent side. They've uh, significant experience in Division 1 over the last number of years, and uh, we would see them as a very, very strong challenge. We're taking it for granted, and we know that uh, if we get over the line by a point on Sunday, we'd be delighted with ourselves. It will be a challenging game. It must be a close game. Whoever wins, it'll be less than three points I'd say just if you look at the league games between the two teams uh, we won by a point I think on both occasions they were both very very tight games and Clonmore have come on a good bit since then so we know we're in for a tough battle on Sunday and it's just going to be a matter of whoever can get over the line on Sunday it could be just one wee break of a ball that'll, that'll set, settle the game Tully Sarn are a very good team and um, they, they, they're an excellent team and probably um, well below playing well below their position of what they really deserve and uh, we know that Tully Sarn will be a big challenge to us and, and their speed and their pace is, 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 is strong, that's their strong points and they have some very good footballers. Oh, there's a great buzz in the community uh, over this last number of weeks. We've been very, very fortunate to reach a number of county finals this year and uh, this is the last in a, a number of appearances here at the Athletic Grounds and everybody's buzzing and we hope for a victory in Sunday. Uh, we had a, a breakfast morning last Sunday uh, which had, had an excellent turnout, uh, bottoms up, flags are out. But as players on the squad, we're trying to I suppose, take a step back from that as much as we can. I would say there'll be quite a few off work on Monday, there'll be very few at work on Monday, and, and um, I hope that's the case. <laughs> I think probably be a, there'll be a lot of us off Monday, maybe, but um, I'm not sure. I'd say a good few of us will be off. Hey, well, I would say the majority of the squad <laughs> and management team won't, won't be making an appearance. 
Come Monday, but we haven't, we haven't even thought about that. It hasn't come into the equation. Say we're very much concentrating on, on the game, the 60 minutes in, in front of us, and may the best team come out, come out on top.
soldier. The winner of the halftime draw is Kieran Clark from Police Army. Kieran Clark. Oh, to Falcha Rove, Arash, Gaji, Arma, Talafi Shard, Wahan Shaw, a Bark Nalu Classy in Ardwaha, Finn Yadarnala, then Kleha Idervanak Shaw, Kleha Kianish, the Creve Idervanak in Ardwaha, and our crush band, August Clan Aaron. So you're all very looking back for the second half of the intermediate final here, um, where Clan Aaron lead 2 3 to White Cross, six points. Just before we are ready to go, a couple of shout outs, big shout out to uh, my old friend Shane Malone who's in uh, Nottingham watching this, and Shane Malone says, come on, White Cross, he'll be hoping um, younger brother Connor can inspire the Greens to victory. And also to Michael Kennedy, a uh, White Cross native, who's watching this game in Perth, in Australia. Um, a big hello from his cousin, Blahine, uh, Damien, and the boys. So I hope you're wa watching the match, guys, and hope you're enjoying it. And hope for better fortunes in the second half for your team. Um, Rory Robinson's back out on the field. And he's ready to throw in the ball here. Let's just check and make sure that there's, a, there's appropriate pressure in the ball there, Kevin. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, what, that, that's what that seemed to be about. That's, that's all that, you check everything now, it is. Know, and it's in. And Dermy Boyle gets a, his fist slip and f breaks it down to Cal McSherry. And Cal McSherry breaks forward, evades two or three challenges, finds Mark Shields. Mark Shields is immediately faced up by three or four men. And he's heading sideways again to McSherry. McSherry punches it down the line to Conor Malone. Conor. He's tight in the corner. Uh, he tried to feed it back out, and his arms seem to be held. Referee's given a free in. A um, couple of early things I thought was free. Cal McSherry's in here. He's inside the 14. He lays it off, and it's a shot for goal. Hits the crossbar. Back out to Cal. Cal hits the crossbar again. Goes back into Mark Sheens. He goes down. It's a penalty. Oh, unbelievable scenes here in the Athletic Grounds, Kevin. Not once, but twice the crossbar was struck by two brothers. That was a fantastic play there. That's all in the opening 45 seconds. Uh, and this is a penalty now for White Cross getting straight back into the game. But what, <laughs> you know, you just you don't see that too often. Bar is twice off the crossbar in the space of a few seconds. Yeah, it all opened up there for, for White Cross from the quickly taken free. And it was a great ball across to Neil McSherry, who, who's come out of this half injured here. He had a great strike on goal, which the keeper pushed up onto the crossbar. Came straight back out to Cahill his brother, who led on, he was going to hit it right-footed and juked on his left and had it smashed it off the crossbar. Mark Sheens caught that, went to go around his man and was pulled down. So Conor Malone has placed the ball here and uh, he runs up and he strikes this ball and puts the keeper the wrong way and the white cross are back in this game, Kevin. Goal right at the right time and it's uh, level scores here again. It's a goal and six for White Cross and two goals and three for Clanner. And what a start to the second half. Brilliant start for White Cross. That's exactly what they wanted. And, and they've got themselves right back on the level terms. And it's all, uh, it's anybody's game. It's going to be a crack in second half. Yeah. It is indeed. The ball's kicked out straight out the middle here. And oh, Demi Boyle raises biggest there and gets it across. And Cahill McSherry feet, um, gets possession and feeds Conor Malone. Conor Malone inside here. The full back up where he is, Declan Lennon. He feeds it out, and Conor Malone runs back. He's only after scoring a goal. He strikes for a point. Kieran, oh, it's going to be a goal. Oh, it's a goal, but the, the umpires are signalling wide. The umpires are signalling wide. Settle yourselves down. The white cross what flags are still waving. A big high ball came across, and Kieran McNulty looked to have kept it in, but the umpires are signalling wide. It was a good skill by Neil McSherry. He would have finished the ball down the net. But um, Clan Aaron on the ropes here. Kevin, this happened. In, in, in the last two games that we uh, that we commented on White Cross where they were behind and the, get, the their momentum got them back in it and then the physically you can see them all rising and but they've a long way to go that happens that usually happens with about ten minutes to go yeah. they, have to, they have to keep it up for thirty minutes <laughs> <laughs> well the, you know that it's the lift that they needed like coming into the second half and Flanner and haven't started at all and um, you know the game's now back level and they could have could be anybody's game now and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what way this game's going to go. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that that's the beauty of our games, Kevin. And, um, and Kieran McCurry, was, he was way outside the 21 there. He's going to take a free from his hands. And the, the referee put him back. And of course, there's going to be a kick out for that wide. He slices that somewhat over to the left hand side here, but it's a great breakdown by Clan Aaron, by um, 
Paul McKenna, and it, uh, it's going to be Connor Bell who hits the free kick, plays it backwards to Brent McKenna. He plays it inside, and Shea Hafferman's fouled. And referee going to have a quick word with uh, Connor Malone. Um, very eventful couple of minutes there, which Connor will just be hoping to take the sting out of this attack. Um, there, Mark Beatty signaling to somebody that he wants to see a run, a bit of home in the full in the full forward line. Uh, Roy Robinson has had the game up for some reason here. Connor Malone makes his way back down the line, so so as to cut that avenue out for a pass. And Mark Shields has pushed up on, on one of the half backs, so it's man for man here at the minute. And the free is about to be taken. He's looking short, but he can't get a shot, so he's going to put this long. Puts it right across the field to Chris McCafferty, who's had an awful lot of the ball in the first half. He punches it down the line to James McDade. Back to McCafferty. McCafferty, distinctive with the beard. Feeds it back to McDade. McDade comes under pressure. He carries it through two tackles. He gets the arms made of him there. Plays it across to Beatty. Beatty, first time, well, tried to first time it. Found Neil McSharian. White, the Clan Iron man was quicker to the ball there. And it's White Cross feeding it. This is what they're at in the first half, Kevin. They don't want to shoot. Look no, at and this is what happens. The ball gets turned over again. They need to be a wee bit more decisive. And it's just, if they don't get running at teams and, and opening up space that way, they do seem to be really in that forward and, and they end up the ball's being turned over. Yeah, and what an outlet Barry Oakley is for White Cross. That was a 40-yard pass across the field to Barry Oakley, and there's no doubt that he was going to make that ball. He wasn't going to let his man get to let it. Jeremy Boyle plays a 1-2 with Collie O'Hanlon. That's poor, <laughs> that is poor. I don't even know what to say about that. I don't know why I'm more disappointed with the full forward for not making more of an effort to get it <laughs> or for the delivery end of it. But uh, whatever it was, here comes Clan Iron and the referee wags them on. There's a couple of fouls there, but the referee says play on. And, oh, two hops oh, there, two hops. And the referee says play on, we'll let you away with it. <laughs> <laughs> All the rules went out the window for a wee minute there, but um, the ball's still going and it's still Clan Iron and the, and the attack. I'm sure our viewers at home are screaming at the computer screens. <laughs> um, and and they've got inside here, and it's Kim to Paul, Paul McKenna. He tries one with the outside of his boot, but on that occasion, um, just off target there. So whew, we get a chance to catch our breath there. And, uh, just for any of anyone who is watching on Arma TV, just if you want to send us a message or a picture. Or, um, our, our Twitter handle it's at, at arma underscore GAA and we'll, we'll be happy to read out where, where you're watching it or um, who you're cheering for um, hope you're enjoying the service and it is a cracking game so hopefully um, you, you, you're, you're finding it entertaining um, this is going to be a kick out from Cahill McParland he's signalling everyone over to the far side and he kicks it over to this side Conor Malone raises the tallest and he caught that and flicked it behind him McGee gets it first and it was an insane foul Beatty tries to take it quick but there's no quick on he's looking inside and there's a good bit of movement by the by the forwards bit of pull in there in the midfield Beatty's on it again and he looks left footed and hammers it in and that's a good ball finds McKenna and McKenna this time he just hypnotised the White Cross defence there. You get it, Paul McKenna, the hypnotist. He hypnotised the White Cross defence. <laughs> you stick that comment in <laughs> for any of them jokes for somebody else. Sent that over the bar. That's given the lead back to um, Connor here. Yep, point on it. 2-4 to 1-6. Bit of tussle out round the middle and Beanie was too strong. There says, man, the referee says play on, even though there's a rugby tackle out. Heffernan come, comes on it there, he gets inside the 45. It's back to Henderson. Henderson plays it out wide here. It's a tight angle for Sealy. Yeah. That's a cracking point. Yeah, it's good good running again. The clan to pick up the ball there and just run straight up the heart of defence and offloaded <coughs> it a few times and, and kicked a lovely score over. So it's it's an excellent response from Clan Iron since the, the, uh, the penalty. Yeah, and it's just what the clan Iron management would have wanted. Uh, that's a poor kick out by McParland. Has he just gifted another point? 
at least. Oh, well in by Shields. Shields' fitness or his speed got him to that, Kevin. I'd say anyone else in the field. Oh, nicely done. Nicely done by Kevin McShay. Anthony McCann's under pressure. But the coming away, that was the McCanning. Does well and gets it out to Dermy Boyle, who's in the nacre of space. He feeds it back to Neil McSherry, who cuts inside. He's going to be fouled, yeah. Oh, he gets up and he, he puts his man the wrong way. And there's an overlapping the outside. Barry Ogden comes out and wins possession there again. He looks inside and a nice first pass across the field. Well, yeah, fouled there for, for uh, holding in the midfield or inside, just outside the 45. Free for right across here. Barry Ogden fires this in high. And there's a potential flick here. Kieran. I mean, he does exceptionally well um, to, to catch that ball, but then he, under pressure he dropped it. And Neil McSherry unable to get to the breaking ball quick enough. And it's uh, Mark Beatty who's looking, looking again. Mark Beatty's been in the middle of everything that's been happening for, for Clan Iron in a good way today, Kevin. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He's, um, you know, he's, he's, the, he's the old hand of the team and you expect him to be um, leading from the front. He's doing that on this occasion today. Yeah. Um, fed back here. Massive effort. A keeper. Oh, I can't remember if I was going to bounce over him. Uh, um, uh, it's maybe just the angle we're at here. I thought the, I thought the keeper maybe uh, was a bit unsure of it there, but he made the right decision not to bounce wide. And the referee um, is holding play up here for a substitution. It's number 17 on the Clanaran team, which is Johnny Tarood. And he's going to replace midfielder John McGee. John McGee and tried hard all day. Midfield, um, he be the place, so here come Connor and again, and a nice ball down the down line into McKenna. McKenna feeds it inside, and a nice turn of, turn of pace. Ooh, and Declan Latham, Kevin, he tried to just hang that to the outside of the post and pull it back in, but it didn't come back in time for him. It was too yeah. close. No, it was he, he needed to settle himself. And, um, it, it, was a, it was a handy enough opportunity to get a score there. He should have, should have done better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, White Cross seemed to be ready, and um, substitutions down here. I see Michael Malone ready to enter the fray. Michael will be a uh, cornerback, maybe half back on the. Uh, White Cross team, so there's, there's some change about to be made. The uh, referee has just just seen this here, so he's going to hold the kick out. And uh, Michael will replace. He's replaced fullback Declan Lennon. So, even. Reavy goes to full back. Just getting on top here. Um, nice ball in McKenna. He turns it on this left. Oh, an absolute fantastic point there by McKenna. He's an inspired man ever since he said that joke about him, Kevin. He's really committed himself. He has, yeah, but he does a simple thing. You know, he's, he gets out in front of his man, wins the ball, and uh, just turns and kicks it over the bar. You know, yeah. he makes the whole thing look real simple. And, um, it isn't that much, I suppose, at the end of the day. No, he's, he's, <coughs> he's a big enough fella. He's half a head bigger than b bigger than his marker. And he's making that physicality count in the full forward line. He's, uh, they're unsure whether he's going to go on his left or his right. It's a sideline ball here to White Cross who find themselves three points in arrears again after having gone level. This ball is kicked long down the line. Oh, oh. McNulty tried to shoulder his man out of, the, out of play. And, oh, I can. don't know if I can have caught that. I hope not. I can't really hope that. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Sideline ball for Connor, which Mark Beatty's going to take. He's in the rush to take. Referee's just going to award with Kieran McNulty for, for getting involved at all, I suppose. Uh, Beatty looks for a shot again, gets it, gets it back. And 
he's looking to get on the left, but he has, he has to get through two or three tackles there, and he doesn't like it. He doesn't like when he has to get through tackles. And the referee has, the ref and it was a good decision by the referee. I think if I was a referee, I would have given that a free too. It's whenever a player should give a ball and he doesn't give it, and then runs in and he ends up getting held up. I think the referees tend to favour the, the defenders because he's thinking, uh, if you know, if you'd have done it the easy way, you would have let go of it in the first place. And Mark Sheens, who's already, he's already kicked one of these. He kicked a 45 in the first half. It should be a straightforward task for him if he's if he keeps his um, accuracy up, and he seems to have. He's got a nice relaxed style of kicking game. That's a, an important point for White Cross just to keep the scoreboard moving for him. Yeah, you would think that you know he's he's, he's fairly accurate there. And, um, you would think maybe he might start kicking more to in the orange jersey. <coughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, Bones Denmark, yeah, and, uh, I think we're we're here to make a uh, tactical decision for, for, for the county <laughs> senior team. But that's neither here nor there. Um, here comes McKenna again. Oh, what a run through the middle shoot! And he shoots and takes the, the easy score. Kevin, this is what we were talking about in the first half in the first half where Tanner and weren't doing this, you know, where they were finding themselves running in on goal and they were inclined to go for goal. Um, where we, you know the game was crying out for them to be tapping them over the bar. And um, the manager has obviously told them at half time when you get a, a side at the post, take your point first and anything else after that. It's just a head tackle from behind. You don't see too many of them. That's a real Lorgan thing, whatever. <laughs> Lorgan thing, eh? Or Craig running, Gavin or whatever. I wasn't running about it, me or Craig Gavin, <laughs> on And there's Neil McSherry. He plays a nice ball into Collie O'Hanlon. Collie O'Hanlon gets to it. He got to it, and, and then in his, in his eagerness to, to win the break ball, he's a judge that lifted it off the ground. So the goalkeeper's going to take this, and Dady gives it to the full back. There's a man down Hort. And that is Adam Kelly. He looked a wee bit wobbly there, but it's, it seems to be his ankle. So we've got a physio or two on the field, and the referee, no, he's happy to let play go on there. So Connor just slowing the play down here with Barry McCambridge back to the goalkeeper, McCure. And Connor happy to run the ball out, of the, out from the 45, and they can expect to get a bit of pressure. And that was a poor ball, but well taken by Seeley, and Seeley gives it to Bell. And they've got four on two here. Nice break forward by Ryan Henderson. And that's, that's what you would have expected Ryan Henderson to get the whole day. Kevin, um, nice ball into the full forward line. And Ryan Henderson just coming, ghosting in off his shoulder and slotting the ball over the bar. It's simple, isn't it? Yeah, he's done very well. He's fair, like Ryan has been fairly quiet in the game. And there's a credit to White Cross, but he's um, once the stars to open up a bit there, and has got on the ball and kicked a lovely score. Yeah, and well done by Mark Shields. Oh, he's not happy with that. And he seemed to get his hand in and flick the ball away, but um, Rory Robbins is saying that maybe it was a tackle from behind or a push or that, but Clannaren got away with that there. Um, if White Cross are going to make any inroads in this game, we're 17 minutes into the second half. They'd want to they'd get it back to under a goal again. Certainly wouldn't want to go further behind. Um, Michael Rowan judged their foul there, and it's going to be a free just on the 65 metre line. Played backwards. And it's Connor Bell just outside the 65, and he floats one in here to that man McKenna. He makes great running here. Going to shoot. Left footed. Kevin. Kevin. That's, that's, that's just that's just special. Yeah, it's just showing off. Yeah, yeah no, no, it was great technique. It was he, he, he ran and he, he had the strength and he had the ability to get past his man and he just checked back on his left and casually just slotted that over the bar for his fourth. So he's uh, he's he's had a, he's made a difference in the second half. He scored four points and Barry Sealy scored a goal in three. Substitution. As number five, Adam Kelly has been replaced by number 21. And all of a sudden, Clan again, our Clan Aaron are winning all the kickouts there. That's a dangerous slip of the tongue there, Clan Clan Aaron, Clan again. Shitter, shitter. They're near neighbours. I doubt they are. And wouldn't be the best for hands, but um, but yeah, it's it's all Clan Aaron at the minute ever since that goal. and. Um, you know the uh, obviously whatever their management has has fed out to them at half time, 
you know, he didn't get it. They didn't get a plan it within the first 45 seconds, obviously, and the goals went in. But it's just been all Clan Iron all since. Yeah, there's something happened off the ball there where number four for Clan Iron went down, holding his head, and Cal McCary from White Cross, who be no stranger to adversity, um, would be a nice way to put it, Kevin. Aye, that's well worded. Yeah, he was pulled pulled back and, and yellow carded. I feared the worst from when I seen him hanging down, holding his head. I have to say, but it's only a yellow card. Goalkeeper. Kicks us out the middle. And what's to do? Straight away. Don't know what happened there. Well, he's just having a just to down a little bit. You remember the last game, Kevin, the goalkeeper's kick outs? Do you remember he kept trying to kick it over to the sideline when he was um, when he was hooking them out over the remember he kept remember he kicked three in a row out for a sideline ball. But in this game he's kicking them out the middle and they're they're good ball out the middle and well won by Danny Boyle, he flicks it on. And that man, McCafferty, um, tidies up the back. We had a substitution in the middle of all that excitement. Um, oh, there's a <laughs> Kevin. He was there to be hit. He was. One missed him, the other one didn't. <laughs> he was, you get away lucky once, but he, he didn't shift his feet fast enough and he got knocked out over the sideline. But P. McGuinness has entered play for White Cross in the full forward line. Neil McSherry's been fouled about four times there, and Rory's given a free. They've got seven men in ball. If they kick it in over the top of them, they're going to take half the clan and team out of it. And that's played towards P. McGuinness, who uses his speed with low centre of gravity. Shea Haffernan does really well there and plays the ball off. He's a good player, him, um, Kevin. Yeah, he's Shea Haffernan, he's been very, very tidy today. Played for the Miners as well, County Miners. Ball played back here, and here come Clans at McLean again. Clan Iron on the attack again. Played back, sorry, there. Played back to Cafferty. Cafferty inside the 45. He has a goal to his name. It's over the far side there to Beatty. Beatty tries. Tried a very ambitious one with the left foot. I'm sure why not. I suppose they're, they're six in front. Yeah. Yeah, 16 10. And it's been a long time since White Cross have got a score. Um, there's nine minutes in the clock. I've seen White Cross come back from score lines like this before in the in the semi final and in the earlier rounds, but they're gonna need to pull a pull it out of the bag here. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna need one or one of them games. We've seen it twice before and you know I, I think that the the, the, uh, the last two games they really had them dead buried at one stage and they've come back to the minutes. So. Yeah. Uh, there was a break of ball. That it sums up this match. The two of them went for it together. They both heavy hit there. But now they're all up and back on their feet. Well done there at Long Ball. Um, yeah, it just summed up the game there when the two when the two teams went for a breaking ball and um, where White Cross were winning it in the first half, the Clansman just got in sharper there and uh, wrapped up possession and they're slowing the, the play down here and they're six points up with eight minutes to go. Um, doesn't look good here for White Cross. You know, they just need they need uh, something to give them a wee bit of momentum again. There, you know, we said earlier there when they got the goal, it's usually a bit later in the game where they sort of get that and, and gives them a bit of momentum. And that's just where they are at the minute. It's just a wave of orange jerseys coming forward here and, and keeping the, the scoreboard ticking over. Yeah, they have got they have got the personnel in the in the forward line. If they were able to move the ball quick enough, they've got Barry Oak McKeown playing on the forty five, and they've got P McGuinness and Collie O'Hanlon inside, and then. Have Mark Shields maybe supporting all of that, so they need they need possession. They need to be getting it over the over the half and, and attacking. There's a great free. That's, that's a massive free by Barry Sealy. Yeah, he scored one in the first half as well, like that. And he just it's just the way he strikes it and he just goes through his day over the bar. <coughs> yeah, it's I suppose it's the most effective way to take a free kick. Short here to Eamon Reavy. and Eamon plays it to Frankie Gorman and put him in all sorts of bother. Mark Shields still in bother. He uses speed to burst out at two or three tackles. Oh, and he was dispossessed, but referee says he had his arm pulled or his jersey pulled. Oh, God, Rory, didn't take it. Pulled the flag. He just was, he wasn't in the right place. And that's just giving Clan Iron a chance to get all the men back. And that ball, that's got an awful lot of McSherry, but he, he wins it against the odds. Plays it into his brother, Neil. And they need to move this into the full forward line. Ball into P. McGuinness. He gathers it, turns, and a dummy gets it to Neil McSherry again. He's pulled down, but the referee says, Get up. Over 
Kieran. Yeah, over Kieran. Um, it was just it was hard to see what was going to happen in there. Um, it's uh, sun beating down here in the athletic grounds. Clan Iron coming again. They're not all mind you. The Clan Iron. Oh, here come White Cross again. Well done. Mark, Mark Shields is able to secure possession there. Barry Ogue plays it back to, Ke to Kevin McSherry. Chance of a shot here. Blocked down. Neil McSherry. Shot and goal. Saved. Shot from a very, very tight angle. He might have been putting that ball in the bar. Here come Clan Iron again. And they've. They've. Uh, White Cross have abandoned defence here for the time being. And Discipline's getting a wee bit ragged, and that's a nicely slotted point there. <coughs> <coughs> and that was substitute Daniel McCavanagh at that point to leave the score at the minute. It's 2 12 to Clan Iron and 1 7 to White Cross. Another substitution here for Clan Iron is Jack Wilson replacing number 11, Barry Seeley. Number 17 in White Cross this morning as well. There now, in the bar. Yeah. And number 17, Ryan McSherry is replacing Colin Hanlon. All right. So the ball came down again. Right the middle area. Can't share by Neil McSherry. Wouldn't be the biggest man in the field. Caught that midfield. And the ball played into Brian McKim. Brian McKim tries to shake off his man. Brian McKim runs back. Fight not very difficult to do. Ball played into Cal McSherry. Fed back Damon Reavy with a shot and goal. And it's a goal! A goal for White Cross. And a much needed goal. And here comes the come back Kevin yeah we knew it was going to come eventually <laughs> for us uh, we were talking about it the whole game and they, they, they just buried the goal at the right time and it gives them a bit of hope for the last I four know. or five minutes all new White Cross supporters sitting at home watching this here he's can uh, he's can get sort of half excited there Michael Malone's out here with his man and ball's out well done he, he was able to shepherd the ball out for a sideline for White Cross and gets it to Neil McSherry and they need another one Soon enough after that, Barry Ogden don't, he don't have it, he could get out and win that ball. Rory waves play on, and it's all very tight around the midfield there. And number 10, Jamie McDade gets away there, he plays it in, in field to Daniel France. A nice bit of football there, and Ryan Henderson, like shooting practice there. Hit the post, didn't go over. It hit the inside of the post and went across the face of it. He, he was dead centre in front of in front of the post. So tried to stick that over and keep her. He was looking for a short and Clan Iron pushing up. He'd be as well kicking this out as far as he could. Oh, well done. Um, quite cross able to win possession here and hit away they come again. Neil McSherry feeding Connor Malone. Connor Malone steps past his man and lays it off to Barry Oak McKeown. Barry Oak finds Cal McSherry. Cal McSherry runs through, turns. He's gone over carry if he doesn't do something soon. Feeds back to Neil McSherry. He's got men over on the right side. Oh, and that's poor. That was Ryan McSherry. <laughs> it was well worked until the shot. It was. It, it looked very. Looked like it was going to be a good attack. But you would have thought they were maybe going to try and put a ball in or put a high ball in for goal or that. But um, not on that occasion. It's going to take another goal. It is at this stage, Barry. It was a good opportunity there to work a ball on in. They've done well to get that, get that bit of space. But instead of shooting at that stage, they should have come, maybe brought it all in or put it in the edge of the square. Yeah, agreed. Um, but for fairness to White Cross, they haven't given this up when they're still battling away. Big high ball kicked out in the middle, and Ryan Henderson nips in and gets the breaking ball and punches this down the line to James McDaid. McDaid out, turns his man, swings this right footed and wide at the near post. So th that's two opportunities Clans would have had to Clan, Clan Aaron would have had to make that a seven point game as it is, it's still a five point game. Shit with Cal McParn kicking this out. Straight down the middle and they're all up. And it's White Cross who got away with it. And a long ball again transferred into the forward line. Barry Oak coming out and scoops that up. He finds Neil McCherry. Neil McCherry moving at pace. Finds Mark Shane. Mark Shane's inside the 14. He's travelling too fast. Kevin, he couldn't get stopped. He's brought down and it's a free. It must be just outside the, just outside the 14. He tries to take it quick and to get in his road. And 
I think the goal chance is gone. He'd need to just tap this over the bar. Um, there's two minutes left. There's five points in it. <coughs> yeah, he taps it over the bar. It's a four-point game with a minute and a half of normal time to go. It's 2-12 to Clannaghan and 2-8 to White Cross. Clannaghan um, will be in no hurry with this kick-out whatsoever. There's obviously another substitution coming on for Clannaghan. It's going to be number eight, Oren Downey. If they get the chance to put him on. Yeah, the goalkeeper's really taking his time with this. Only, only 45 seconds of only time to play. Big ball kicked out of him, pushing the back as he went for that. White Cross went, went, won that brief and Paul accidently there. Neil McSherry with an overlap from Eamon Reby. He tries to put, play that ball in and on. It's over the whole lot of them. The referee's given a free, <laughs> a free end about 30 yards from goal. He may put it over again, Kevin, and, and leave the goal in. He may, they may put it over and try and win the kick out and go for goal. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, poor discipline as well from Clan Aaron there. They a wee bit of panic in their defence unnecessarily. Barry Oak McKeown. Wide. Ah, oh, he put it wide. Oh, and he's, oh, he's devastated. It, it was um, probably fatigue in the legs and, and adrenaline and everything. We, said, we talked before about when when the legs are full of adrenaline and you think they're heavier than they are and then you kick it and you boot it away. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, goalkeeper looks up and assesses his options. Time, time's up, bar any added time. White Cross win this kick out again and fair, full credit to White Cross. They've, they've contested every ball to the max and they're asking real questions of Clan Iron who haven't really been able to see out this game as their management would have, would have hoped for. Connor Malone does well here. He jigs in, in and around two or three men, and they get another chance. And they're leaving it again. Um, if they had to put that last free over it, they could have played this short <laughs> for goal here. Do you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Every every opportunity is vital in a game of football. Barry Oak. He takes more time over this. Oh, and he played that in, and Neil McSherry tried to tried to get across the face of the goalkeeper and box that in, and he, and he got in well, but goalkeeper won that and, and won a free out for his team. Goalkeeper kicked that ball away, and referee, the linesman, signalling for another substitution, and this is Oren Downey, who will get on for the, for the last minute or so of this game. Big day for any lad to play in a county final, Kevin. And he'll That's be glad. It. He'll be glad of whatever minutes he can try and make a name for himself. <laughs> Get out in front of his man here, or, <laughs> or whatever he can. And he stayed on to that man, uh, McKeown. McKeown. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ball kicked out the middle. Poor kick out. And it's one. Cahill McShay wins it again. He played left footed in to P McGinnis. P McGinnis tries to turn his man, and he's running in on goal. He'd been held slightly, dropped the ball and picked it up again. Give it to Barry Oak McKeown. There's four or five round him out there. It's all very tight. And just handling, let them down there, yeah, Kevin. Just uh, overcomplicating the whole thing. Yeah, they, they'd been as well just lo lobbing that into the box or whacking it across the middle because they were, they were hiding in nothing what they were out there. And here's Chris McCafferty, who's had a, a really good game for, for Clan Iron throughout. And there's a nice point. That's not, tell me that's not Paul McKenna. It <laughs> is. Indeed it so. is uh, another cracking point. All of his points have been, I wouldn't say spectacular, but they've been very, very good points, Kevin. Yeah, very accurate. It's a real sort of lazy kick he has whenever he's going for his scores. But he's had a super, super second half. He's had, he has, and whatever the manager said to him at half time, he can be very proud of his efforts. Here's Eamon Revy. They're two on one. No, well, they were two on one for a split second. <laughs> it's now about four on. No, it's now about eight on two. But it's uh, White Cross, Neil McSherry, he's doing his best. They might lob one in here. Cal McSherry. They play keep ball here and now they've lost it. Um, referee may just blow this up. I'd say can't be much, long, much longer left. That's a sideline ball to White Cross. There's five points in it with time, with time up in, in out of time. White Cross 
coming again to their eternal credit they haven't given up here Anthony McCann is being held oh, he's, given, he's giving him for over Kieran Kieran uh, I think he's going to blow it up now surely yeah 